Okay, so I think I welcome back to the afternoon uh, session of uh, today's forum. Uh, I know it's quite challenging to uh, speak just right after lunch, so I'll try to keep it short so that you can uh, continue your discussion after this. Uh, I was asked by uh, NASA to give you a quick bird eye view of national policy on research and innovation. So it's just going to be a little bit uh, 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 our, our sidetrack from what uh, the topic of today, but I, I believe that this could be something uh, for you to um, think about in terms of what is the relevant in terms of uh, promoting ethics. Uh, so um, after this, I would welcome if you have any good ideas on we should add more on the ethical aspect uh, to our uh, research innovation policy. So, uh, okay, here's just to inspire you, uh, the big picture. Usually when we do research, uh, do a lot of research and innovation policy, we have to look at the big picture of how uh, the direction of the country, how we want to develop our country. And we have one of these grand challenge. Um, actually, there are many grand challenges, but I'll just pull out two for you to think about. Uh, if you look at our uh, national wealth, or a good um, proxy would be look at our GDP. Thailand is the green line uh, in this graph. And uh, you can kind of see that we sort of uh, gradually uh, increase our wealth or GDP for the past 40 something year, almost 50 years. And at the moment, we are at about uh, 6,000 US dollars per uh, head per year. And uh, if you look at the growth of Korea, right, starting 40 something years ago, the same point, Korea is doing very well and then now become a developed country. Uh, and Malaysia is doing well too. You almost, uh, you're gonna be a high income country very soon. And uh, China is you know, heading up a lot. Thailand is kind of like catching up. But you can start to see that in, over the past 10 years, we kind of a little bit of stagnate. You know, we don't enjoy this 7% or 8% GDP growth. We are about five, and you know, slowing down to like 3%. So this is one of the challenge in terms of, you know, how, how do we move forward? Okay. Another challenge is income distribution. If you look at this graph, uh, it's the average income per person per month of. Uh, we call it provincial product, you know, by province of the, how many provinces do we have now? Who knows? 76, 77. 77, very good. If you take Bangkok out, the average for the whole country is about 1,200 baht per head per month, okay? And we have about 20 provinces that are above average, and about the rest are below average. So you can see a big, uh, income inequality in the country. So this is another thing we don't want to see. You know, it's just like one country is very rich and another region is very poor. So this is another challenge for the national planner on you know what what we could do. I mean, we you know to sort of have the same equal uh, access, equal opportunity for the whole country. So this is the thing that you know, as a national policy maker, we look at very big picture. Okay, and we set direction on, okay, here's what we want to head to. And this is not from my office, it's from the government, from this government. Uh, instead of we now at the big juncture that we have to move forward, we cannot do business as usual anymore. We have to change. And we need to move towards more innovative, more value-based uh, uh, economy, you know, or, you know, like industries. And uh, the government have come up with this theme called Thailand 4.0 or 4.0. Anyone have heard about it? Or maybe I should ask who never heard about Thailand 4.0? Okay, and anyone understand what it is? Or who thinks you completely understand what Thailand 4.0 means? <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's uh, actually it's a vision. It's a vision. Uh, we, I believe the government come up with this term. It's just meaning that we have to change, right? And uh, with that, we have these five pillars that 
we need to change, we, have, we need to invest, and we have to uh, make sure that we prepare for the future, uh, changing our industry structure, changing our workforce profile and all that. So these are the five key pillars that we have to work on. Uh, and actually, at every aspect of development, you have to think about all these five pillars, uh, science and technology, and social science, medical, and everything. So uh, they are what? Human resource development. Uh, if you work with the company, with the enterprise, you have to think about how you promote innovation-driven and enterprise. Uh, we need to enhance competitiveness of our target industry, and the government has come up with this S-curve industry. Who have heard about S-curve industry? It's not the topic of today uh, forum, but uh, anyway, I, I just uh, just walk you through like maybe five five you today is not walking. Uh, and we need to strengthen our regional development, not just concentration within Bangkok. And definitely, we need to connect Thailand to the world. You know, we cannot just you know, live with uh, everything is connected at the moment, in particular ASEAN and in all this region. And with that, uh, I don't have time to go into the detail, but we need to invest in the infrastructure and science and technology and research and development is. Uh, that is one of the key intellectual infrastructure. And in parallel to that, the government is now looking at reforming our administrative mechanism, the public administration. We want to work more with the private sector, the Brashara concept, public private partnership. Uh, they renewing international agreement, a lot of law and regulation. So with this, for science, technology, and research and innovation, we are also under reform as well. Many of you probably participate in this reform activity. So uh, recently, uh, we have just uh, established uh, a new national committee on research and innovation, uh, on research and innovation policy council, chaired by the prime minister, and the whole cabinet, believe it or not, is part of this council. And another 20-something of uh, experts from all the areas, private sector, uh, and we have developed this uh, so-called National Research and Innovation Strategy. It's a 20-year strategy. It's quite broad. It's a framework. And we are working on action plan at the moment. This uh, is just the latest uh, uh, policy that has just been approved by the Council, and we are tabling it to Cabinet, hopefully within this month. Uh, I don't have time to go into the details, but it touch on uh, four key aspects of development. Uh, first, do research for economic prosperity. Second, for social and environment. Third is for uh, strengthen our core uh, knowledge, you know, basic knowledge. And last but not least is on human resource development, infrastructure, and system of innovation, STI system uh, uh, you know, itself. I have given you all the little you know, information about each strategy has details, you know, what we need to do. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a bit more small, but you have uh, the handouts and you're welcome to take the slides uh, with you if you like to keep it. Uh, but we're going to publish very soon in Thai the whole uh, 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 plan. I'll just walk you through quickly. Uh, so it highlights some of the keywords and direction and all the little one stakeholders that get involved. Okay, as for ethics, it's, uh, we consider it as part of the uh, infrastructure and enabling factor. See if you could find it in here or this in here uh, somewhere. Uh, actually, it's under quality infrastructure and uh, enabling factor. So definitely we have ethics embedded into this uh, national plan. Uh, to implement this, just two weeks ago, we have just launched, uh, actually approved, just this grants, uh, this so-called spearhead program. And actually today, it's another track on uh, integrated uh, plan, the Pan Brunaka, and some of you have to probably walk out to a room next door or go into my office at the moment, uh, defending the budget for this uh, research and development. Anyway, uh, this, uh, we, I just pull out this spearhead program because it's uh, a new mechanism that we fund research that uh, close to market and close utilization or for the uh, like social aspect, it would be something that's in urgent need. Um, 
and and we have a uh, uh, sphere here. It's like this is sort of a seed program. We put uh, sphere all the activity, and we also uh, in terms of commercialization, we look at uh, funding research that uh, ready. If you know about this uh, value of debt, right? Uh, in, in research, uh, usually there's a lot of funding. I'm sure if I can. Okay, there's many funding in this uh, area, basic research, all that creation, and the private sector usually fund things that close to market. Uh, we work at the research community, and they say that there are many uh, research which are saw IP that's sort of like at TIL four or five. And it needs a lot of funding to sort of take them, take this work, uh, pass this value of debt, so that it could receive funding from private sector or you know something that near market. So we come up with this uh, spearhead program that uh, designed particularly to fund uh, translational research, you know, that would uh, at the level of around uh, technology readiness of five. Uh, so that you know it could uh, move to around uh, seven or eight, and you get funding for more commercialized, uh, you know, close to market sort of uh, 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 you know level. Um, I just want to walk through this quickly, but I think the key message is uh, at policy level we are uh, looking for new ways of uh, supporting research. And stimulating like public-private partnership, and you know, moving toward innovation. However, uh, coming here and listening to the presentation and the discussion this morning, I think it's it's raised a, a lot of question into more preparation towards this sort of uh, ethics. You know, working with the private sector, what kind of aspect that we need to take into account to involve research ethics. Um, does it need a special treatment or something? Uh, that perhaps you could discuss it in the, in the session after this. This is just an example of one of the spearhead program on functional food and ingredients. I'm not going to go into the detail. Uh, and this is a new way of, as I mentioned, uh, we come up with a, a special, uh, a new way so that we can facilitate more of this kind of uh, a special program on spearhead. And it's a it's a big uh, 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 grant. Uh, each project receives about 100 million baht per project. So this is something that's sort of a big special program. Um, and okay, now switch gear to what related to uh, this forum. Uh, Dr. Dong Yut has mentioned this morning that we have. Uh, uh, form a national ethics committee on science and technology recently as an uh, advisory committee to the office uh, looking at uh, key aspects of uh, uh, ethics related ethical issues in particular um, implication from new technology emerging technology uh, during lunch we discussed about this artificial intelligence big data you know, ethics related to research on genes, uh, um, uh, climate change, those kind of things. So this committee uh, has, has been formed and they have agreed that uh, for this year, we will look into uh, four key areas, the implication of new emerging technology, uh, in particular, in the context of Thailand, you know, you might uh, have heard about research related to these four topics, like in in the international context in, in other country. But we want to look at what the implication uh, uh, in a Thai context, and these are the four areas that uh, they pick with the key uh, principal investigator, Dr. Brasit Plinipongan Kim, is also uh, one of the uh, principal investigator of uh, gene cell and life science related uh, area. And uh, well, I'll just pull out this uh, IEEE technology ethics landscape. That's perhaps you know we, we might have to have think about something like this in a Thai context. You know, IEEE has suggested that we look at code of ethics, professional ethics, and technology as ethics. And you know they are all interrelated. They have this kind of mechanism to govern and. Uh, 
uh, well, one key thing that I get a chance to chat with the people that uh, work in this area, they say that providing a forum for stakeholders to voice their concern, to discuss, uh, is very important. And uh, I have to thank Nastra for uh, this, this uh, organizing this forum as well. That you know, this is a, a very good venue, a good forum to get together all relevant stakeholders and uh, you know table issues. And if there are anything related to policy, uh, you know my office, I myself very uh, happy to help uh, take this uh, the issue forward. You know if if it could be. Uh, uh, you know, support with any kind of policy support. And uh, we have, uh, in addition to like, this this uh, meeting, uh, in the past uh, month and a half, we have whole a number of focus group meetings for each of these topics. And uh, linkage to uh, UNESCO, uh, Dr. Yongyun has mentioned uh, this morning a little bit that he himself has engaged in this uh, UNESCO International Bioethics Committee for some time. He himself uh, has been a chairman of intergovernmental uh, bioethics committee at UNESCO and at the moment he also a member of this uh, International Bioethics Committee. So it would be a good linkage you know, for us uh, uh, at, in Thai, Thailand to link with uh, UNESCO work and also what UNESCO is discussing and you know, link up with uh, uh, you know, in Thailand context as well. And I am, uh, so I will just pull out some of the work that they are doing. This is another group on a uh, more broad picture of ethics on scientific uh, knowledge and technology as well. So uh, we have some connections with them. And uh, we look at what they are discussing. And this team will also uh, draw implication of what we could do, uh, not just uh, uh, like, you know, um, we have discussed that we, we shouldn't wait until problems occur. You know, we should do prevention. But, uh, you know, a, a lot of it, we should not do too much of uh, prevention because we also want to promote innovation. So something as uh, development of platforms so people could talk and share ideas and come up with guidelines for best practice, things like that. Uh, so this is the work COMES. COMES also do this at international level. Uh, okay, I lost the signal. Can you go to almost the... Yes, that, that one, yes. Okay, so... Uh, this is just some of the work that they are uh, looking at at the moment. Uh, they're looking at environmental nanotech, uh, new emerging issue on emerging technologies, like also, they also look at AIs, uh, science ethics, and also gender issue in ethics. We discussed it a little bit this morning uh, at our uh, uh, you know, the opening session. And uh, this is the work of also, they just finished the work on ethics of water and ocean and robotics. You can uh, you know, go to their website and share all these reports. Uh, and I am very pleased that uh, we have been approached by uh, IBC, UNESCO, to host uh, uh, the, the, one of the meetings in 2019. And we are uh, very pleased that we will propose to them that we uh, will host this session, um, both the IBC and also the COMES meeting. And with that, so we'll be planning on uh, having an international, international conference on ethical, legal, and social implication of science and technology. So um, we have two years in preparation to that. And uh, the work that we are doing here and also with our partner in the region, we have a representative from, from Malaysia and the Global Young Scientists, Young Academy. Uh, so this would be something that you know we could take a, a, a recommendation from this forum and plan for activity along the year, next years. And uh, if we have any best practice and recommendation, we could table it to this international forum. And, and we hope that, uh, you know, 
alongside with this national policy in promoting research innovation, as the government itself has planned to increase budget in uh, research, you know, we, we have uh, aims to increase it to 1% of GDP from the level of 0.7% of GDP now. But uh, in parallel, we know that uh, we do need to promote a good practice of research, research ethics, which is very important. So um, with uh, preparing to be the host of this international events, I think it will also help to uh, raising this awareness <coughs> and provide a platform for us to discuss more in preparation to table issue to this meeting. So uh, please mark your calendar, we will uh, have a uh, more detail, you know, later on what exactly. At the moment, we're planning on around uh, June of 2019, but I would like to, uh, you know, get engaged. And we try to build community of uh, practice uh, uh, in, in Thailand and using this event also as, as a magnet that uh, perhaps building a group of uh, the, the academic uh, uh, community in this area. I have joined uh, some of the groups have voice that one way to uh, uh, elevate or you know uh, prepare or like minimize the risk that would happen is to uh, uh, you know bringing new generation into this community raise awareness. So I, I hope that uh, you know STIS policy office. We I have to be frank that we are quite new into this area. Uh, Watch our national research council has been uh, getting involved in this, but. You know, we uh, particularly this. We know that the new implication of the new technology has a lot of implication in ethics, and uh, you know, we we'll look forward to working with you in promoting ethics and building community in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kanchana, for very informative information for STI.